Reading with your kids. Hola, Niho, Konnichiwa, Assalamu alaikum, Shalom, Jumbo, Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are so delighted that you are part of our beautiful Reading with Your Kids family. Please, please, please be sure to subscribe to the show wherever you find your podcast. And if you forgot where you find your podcast, you can check us out on the iHeartRadio app, Spotify, or wherever you find podcasts. Our guest today is Dr. Connie Tate. She is going to tell us about all of her role on reading children's books. We are very proud to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by the Queen Vernita Visitors Series, written by veteran special needs teacher, Dr. Don Menge. This is a wonderful series of nine adventures that will absolutely ignite your children's curiosity and love of learning. Your family will love following the Queen and her 12 subjects as they explore an exotic new land every new year. The Queen's subjects teach her all about stalactites, stalagmites, sharks, seahorses, glaciers, volcanoes, and many, many more interesting and exciting activities and subjects. The series also introduces readers to characters who have a variety of special needs, such as Down syndrome, Rett syndrome, cerebral palsy, deafness, visual impairments, and autism. Pim Snyder has provided bright, colorful, and whimsical illustrations that complement the text perfectly. These stories are so interesting and fun that children will not even realize they are learning as they are reading. The Queen Vernita Educational Series will make a great addition to a classroom or to your family's library. Check it out today. Dr. Don Menges, Queen Vernita Visitor Series. This episode of the podcast is also brought to you by Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck by Allison Paul Klackowitz. This is an awesome book, and it's just such an awesome concept. Every kid knows that mommies are the greatest. I mean, mommies feed us, and they take care of us, and they love us with all of their hearts. But did you know that they are also, like, so wicked cool? That's what we say up in Boston. They're like, wicked cool! Well, one little boy absolutely knows that his mom is cool because his mommy drives a big red monster truck, and it is awesome. It bounces and smashes and takes him on amazing adventures all over the country. In her truck, they can do anything and go anywhere. And best of all, they do it together. That's right, they do it together. You and your kids are going to absolutely love Allison Paul Klackowitz's Mommy's Big Red Monster Truck. It's available on Amazon today. Joining us right now from the Central Valley area of California, she is the author of some great children's books, including Roll On and Scooter Boy. Please welcome to the show, Dr. Connie Tate. Dr. Connie, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for asking, Jed. We're having a beautiful day here in Sherlock, California, and um, you just caught me working on another little story that I am so excited to uh, talk with you this morning. Excellent, excellent. Well, I want to talk uh, about the books that you have published already and about this new book that you're working on. But I also wanted to talk to you um, about the the value of reading with our kids. That's the whole mission of our show is to inspire families to spend more time reading with their kids. And you as a doctor, you're not a pediatrician, you're a doctor of education. What is it, what's your view on this subject in, in terms of how valuable it is to uh, spend time reading with our kids? Well, I spent 40 years as a reading specialist, and I can tell you as people, um, promoting reading was just the, the central um, focus of my work. Uh, so whether it was preschool or kindergarten or infancy or working with organizations, everything um, was focused on the importance of reading. And when I saw your website, I, I, I knew we were a perfect match. If I could tell young parents anything, um, I would say read, 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 because it's about vocabulary, vocabulary, vocabulary. Books bring children uh, experiences that they might not have, introduces them to people they might not meet, 
Um, it gives them an opportunity to learn new words, learn about their world, develop empathy for people and children in different difficult situations. Um, it is so easy to give the gift of reading to your children, Jed. We have access to public libraries. We have opportunities to find books online, relatively inexpensive. It is, it is the way for children to learn about their world, to learn about empathy with others, to extend their vocabulary, prepare them for school. Um, we just, it's that one gift that you give. You invest in that early, and you will be giving your children the gift of a lifetime. Now, what would you say to a, a parent who might be listening to this and they're thinking, uh, and this is something my wife, who's been a teacher for 30 years, has, has heard from parents um, who say, I'm busy. It's your job. This is this is your job to 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 teach my kid how to read. It's your job to teach my kid how to do math. I don't have time to help them with their homework or to read to them. What, that's that's your job. Well, my immediate response to that is that raising a child and preparing them to be successful in school that is a partnership. Mm -hmm. um, it's the responsibility of the teacher to introduce new material. Um, to provide that initial instruction about new concepts. It is certainly the parent's responsibility now to ha give the child an opportunity to practice at home mm -hmm. and to talk to them about what they are learning. Mm -hmm. So this is a, it, this is a partnership. Um, and how prepared are children to learn? They can enter any any school. We have private schools. We have schools that are, are built around uh, performing arts. Uh, parents are interested in um, a technical school. Regardless of that, children's first teachers are their parents. And giving them opportunities to have experiences where their language is expanded upon. There was a research study conducted by um, the meaningful differences in the lives of children. I, I might have that a little off. Mm -hmm. But over and over again, we have shown that the parent here, I'll give you an example. Uh, child walk in the library with, with a mother. Long line. Child three and a half. Hey, you know, we're not... Not fun to stand in line mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're three and a half. But the mom begins to engage in conversation. Oh, Maddie, do you remember when we read that story about that little dog? Look out the window. What do you see across the street? Maddie says a dog. That's right, Maddie. Does that dog remind you of the dog in our story? There's an engaging conversation going on. Mm -hmm. Now, here's another scenario. Child standing in line with a parent, a little anxious. Mommy, mommy, mommy. Shh, shh. Parent quieting the child down. Don't talk. Let's just wait. We'll be up to the counter in a minute. Hush. So we have two different kinds of conversations mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. So a teacher hasn't had these experiences with your child. You're, as the parent, responsible for these interactions with your children. Right. Absolutely. Connie, while you were telling that story, I was reminded of an experience. I think I spoke about it on the podcast in the past, but uh, my wife and I were uh, coming back from Panama. We we're stuck at Miami International Airport for hours and hours and hours because of, of weather delays. And we were actually, our, our gate changed five or six times and actually we had to move to another terminal. And this was going on into the night. We never left Miami until like 1, one thirty in the morning. And there was a family, very tiny family there. Uh, it was a mom with a maybe a three-month-old infant and a three-and-a-half-year-old boy and all their luggage and no one else. And uh, she was on the same flight and she was moving. And we it, it wasn't like from gate five to gate seven. It was from gate five to gate 45 and then back to gate seven and then back to 50. And and this I, we started noticing that this woman with this child and this infant, they were you know, showing up the same gate. So we decided, well, we're going to help her out. 
And of course, naturally, after many, many hours, the, you know, the three and a half year old was getting very anxious and, and, you know, he was bored and he wanted to do something and he was getting, uh, starting to get a, a little mischievous. And I just sat down with him and opened up my phone and started showing him pictures of my family and telling stories along this, the, with those pictures. And he just became fascinated. And we did that for hours. We did that for hours. And it kept his attention and it kept his mom sane and it made the experience bearable for him. So the power of storytelling is so, so incredibly valuable. Oh, absolutely. I, one of my, I'm still, after so many years in education and now being retired and writing stories, I still enjoy so much going into classrooms and reading and interacting with the kids. Um, they, they've just, they always have to give me a new idea and, uh, you know, learning new words. And they're always so inquisitive. In fact, my idea of, of voting on this title for this next book came from a first grader at Walnut Elementary in Turlock. And I, they were asking me questions. And she said, I said, oh, I'm just having a difficult time deciding and she was just immediately up on her feet and she said oh i know we can help you we'll vote on the title for you <laughs> that's wonderful i i just love the enthusiasm for kids and um uh, I, I, I want to talk a little bit about that and kids' enthusiasm and, and how sometimes their, their enthusiasm for learning kind of gets beaten out of them in some situations. But be, and, and I definitely want to talk about your stories. But before we do, we, we, you, you were very eloquent in talking about the, the, the value of, of parents reading to their kids in, in terms of helping them develop a vocabulary, experiencing people they may not have had a chance to meet yet, developing empathy, uh, experiencing different situations that they haven't encountered in, in the real world. But what, a, what about when, when you know, the parent is, has read the 20 minutes a day, how important is it for that child to then see the parent pick up a book themselves to read or to read a newspaper or magazine? Well, I think any time um, parents have an opportunity to uh, look for some information, whether it's a whether it's a novel or um, you know a, a technical uh, book, but it, it does influence the child because mm -hmm. what does the child want to do? The, a child wants to imitate that parent, yep. and so if it's just this, you know, the the one time when you are picking up a book and reading, and, and that's absolutely fantastic. But there is a high degree of importance that, that you, too, are looking for information. Even now with our phones, many people access the information. But I think it's important to point out to the kids what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm, I've, I've looked this up. I've figured this up, out. Um, if there's a problem, um, Oh, oh, we'll say a, a, a dad is, is working or a mom uh, or together the family's working on a project in the yard and they need to look something up and they, they really, you know, they, they go through the process together. Well, let's, let's find out about how are we going to fix the koi pond and looking at the print and, and getting information that you can expand upon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, usually I ha ask an author to talk about their first, th th their published books, and then maybe, because so many authors are, are a little nervous to talk about their works in progress, um, we'll, we'll ask them at, towards the end of the interview. But I want to reverse it a little bit since you've already kind of teased it. You have this new story about a rooster. Tell us about this new story that you're working on, please. All right. Well, Rooster 99, or Highway Bird, is based upon um, the time I was driving back and forth from Turlock to Stockton. I was still employed at that time. And I had just entered the inaugural doctoral program in uh, our town, California Stanislaus State University. And I was kind of having a little, oh, you know, have I taken on too much? I'm, I'm 59 years old. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm driving in the fog, and I notice off to the side, out of, of my peripheral vision, a little rooster running along the median divide 
of Highway 99. And I watched this rooster live in the median divide for almost 18 months. Wow. And other people were starting to spy and see this little rooster uh -huh. and began wondering, how did, how did he get there? And started writing down notes. So Roo Roo Rooster um, is going to be about this unusual living situation that this rooster has gotten himself in <laughs> and how he perseveres and survives. That sounds great. It reminds me of a, of a time I was stuck in traffic on the um, Cross Bronx Expressway in New York City, and I looked over, and there was a, a flock of chickens on the side of the highway. <laughs> 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 it's not what you expected to see. <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely not. Well, well, th so we, we have Ruru Rooster or whatever the kids decide that your title is going to be for coming up and, and something we can look forward to. But right now you have three great books that we can check out. So uh, tell us about Roll On, please. All right. Well, Roll On was inspired by my two-year-old granddaughter, Ren, who loved to go to the farmer's market with her dad. And, of course, she also liked to do everything herself. And he gives her this large spaghetti squash to carry into the house. And she had picked it out. And it, unfortunately, uh, was a little bit too big and began to roll away. And so Roll On is the uh, mischief that this little this little, this big spaghetti squash gets into as it rolls down the hill. Now, originally, Roll On was, the setting was going to be in um, California at their home in Manhattan Beach. And while I was doing some research on spaghetti squash, up popped this picture of a woman named Frida Kaplan, who was actually the... Um, CEO and founder of, I have to say it right, um, Frida's Specialty Produce. And once I discovered Frida, we became friends and we changed the setting to Farmer's Market because Frida Kaplan is now 95 yeah. and she is the individual she was actually a trailblazer in the produce industry in the 60s. And there is a little story about her at the back of Roll On, where after you have read the story and had a fun time with your child watching the spaghetti squash roll around, you can also read about Miss Frida. And she, as my moniker for her, is California's Wonder Woman, because <laughs> she brought us tons of produce and um fruits and vegetables that children my uh if you, you were a child when i was growing up were not available in any grocery stores but our children today hurt who are eating sugar snap peas in their lunches and jicama and um oh the brown mushrooms and kiwi she's also known as the kiwi queen all of these wonderful tastes are directly related to frida kaplan Mm, mm, mm. I, you know, I, you, you're absolutely right. Um, I remember growing up and we had uh, bananas, oranges, apples. You know, that's, that's, that's about right. it. You know, maybe a strawberry <laughs> once in a while. But, you know, when my kids came into the world and I was trying to make sure I was trying to change my eating habits so that they were healthier. And I discovered this thing called a kiwi. <laughs> and I had uh, recently, you know, I, well, w w once I was married, I went down to Puerto Rico for the very first time and, and tasted a mango. And it's like, whoa, this, this is crazy. And, and it's so different now for kids. There's so much more variety in terms of foods that are available for kids. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, the, again, um, I mean, what, what do we really – Overall, what we want children to take care of their bodies, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to begin and in introduce them these, to these helpful eating habits early. So the story starts out with um, telling the boys and girls that every week, Ren and her daddy visit Miss Frida's fruit and vegetable stand because Miss Frida sells the most delicious. 
fruits and vegetables. So, um, uh, you know, again, an opportunity for kids to hear that other children like, you know, to taste things. And I, I do have um, some free curriculum on my website, and there's a tasting activity. Parents and teachers can download um, a chart so that you can actually provide a tasting experience for the kids, whether it's at home or school. That's awesome. Now, you also wrote Scooter Boy. Tell us about Scooter Boy. Well, Scooter Boy is the tale of a little boy named Cal who is uh, left behind late on a Friday, um, and he is the last kindergartner waiting for his mom to pick Mm -hmm. him up. And as he's waiting, he's getting a little bit more and more nervous, and then he realizes his mom has sent someone else to pick him up. And the theme of Scooter Boy is really Cal judges this person on how she is dressed. And so we have a theme that we can talk about at the end of Scooter Boy, um, how we need to take time to get to know people. Mm -hmm. But Cal has quite an adventure trying to get home (laughs) on this hot Friday night. Um, and even though Anya has brought his scooter and his dog, Cal makes a break for it. So I will leave it at that. But right. That is called Scooter Boy. And uh, the last book, and before we talk about the last book, I, I get, one of the things I wanted to ask you about is you were reading specialist as your career for so long, but you – you weren't always a children's author. What what inspired you to become a children's author at this point in your life? And uh, is it something that you always dreamed of? And if not, what was it that inspired you to make that leap? Oh, I, I think I started dreaming about writing children's books when I was seven years old. That was – I loved the – the fictional writing when I was in school. I always played school in my garage. I remember a great big green chalkboard that uh, my sisters and I received as a Christmas present one year. And I would force my younger sister to sit on a chair and I would teach her how to write her name and listen to my made up story. <laughs> and I think more, not more than once I was told that maybe the story I was telling, I would always kind of embellish on experiences, mm-hmm. camping experiences, <laughs> and so always in love that. And then working with children, um, the the stories they would bring and the experiences, we did you know, a lot of sharing in classrooms, what happened on your way to school, a little, um, you know, both the happy and the, and the sad times and finding a, a, a book that would help us discuss things. Usually children in, you know, around first and second grade, they they begin to lose their teeth. So we would read stories about why you would lose your your tooth. And we also have some narrative as well as some informational Mm -hmm. stories about how to take care of our teeth, the loss of a pet, uh, Judith Biorst, uh, the 10th good thing about Barney, helping children learn how to, to navigate life and these ups and downs that we all experience. So when I retired, I have um, lots of files <laughs> with stories I started writing or topics that I would use when I was working with children and now have the, the time and um, enjoyment to put, pick up my pen and, and write some stories and, and hope, hopefully um, entertain and, and help children, again, learn a little bit more about their world. That's awesome. So before we go, let's let's talk about Sylvester's Catastrophic Tale. Sylvester's Catastrophic Tale is the story of a cat that fortunately experienced a lot of kindness from the warehouse men and the personnel at Purina Mills that was lo- that is still located in Turlock today. And Sylvester was a, well, you could also, I could have titled it Saga of a Stray because Sylvester showed up on a rainy, wintry night and was adopted by the warehouse men. 
lived um, in the warehouse, became quite a mouser. But then one day, Sylvester gets a little curious and walks in to one of the containers that's filled with pet chow. And this container is identified and destined to be placed on a ship at the Port Authority in Oakland. And so when the door slams shut, an unexpected adventure begins for Sylvester. And I just had a um, a second grader whose teacher was reading it as a chapter book, and I won't give it away, but I said, well, did the children enjoy the, the end of the story? And her response was, they were astounded. <laughs> Well, that's wonderful. Sounds like uh, Sylvester's Stowaway Adventure is uh, definitely something that will grab a kids' attention and and uh, help them dream about their own adventures. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell everybody where they can find out more about you and download this those curriculums. And also, I believe there's also a video of your grandkids on your website. Am I right? Yes, there is. And so. Anyway, you're welcome to go to www.rollonreading.com. And, yes, there's a, a – I'm the grandparent, but I do think a very sweet uh, video of Wren and Maeve, and they're do, conducting their own tasting experience, and they will share with you which fruit or vegetable they enjoy the most. And from there, there's also some curriculum. There's some tabs across the top. And everything is downloadable. There's no cost for it. So if you pr- uh, press on the, the link that says parents or teachers, you can um, download curriculum that goes directly to um, Scooter Boy and tasting activities and a compare and contrast activity for um, Roll On. And we've even come up with a little song. Roll on spaghetti squash, sung to the easy tune of London Bridge is Falling Down. So um, I, I think they're, <clears throat> excuse me, pretty engaging, and I, I invite you to visit the website and leave me, con- uh, you know, messages. I also visit classrooms, so if you're ever interested in a, a visitation, you can send me an email directly from the website. That is wonderful. So we want to encourage everybody to check out Roll On Reading and check out Connie's books, uh, Roll On, Scooter Boy, Sylvester's Catastrophic Tale, and uh, and and also stay keep in touch with Connie because we have that new Roo Roo Rooster story that's going to uh, <laughs> that the title is going to be selected by a, a, an elite group of young people are going to select the title. That's right, and thank you, Adam. I just want to say. Summer's coming up. Make that weekly visit to the library. Read, read, read. And you'll expand your relationship with your child. They'll learn more about the world. You'll learn more about your child. And thank you for listening this afternoon. You've been ta- listening to the author of Roll On, Dr. Connie Tate. Dr. Connie, thank you so much for being part of our show. Oh, Jeff, thank you for having me on. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Rachel Mazur. Rachel Mazur, she has a beautiful series of middle grade books called The Nature Club. And you're going to love finding out all about it. Hey, speaking of finding out about things, if you are the author of a great children's book, we would love you to find out about our Reading With Your Kids certified great read program. We have assembled a a team of evaluators. They're they're, they're teachers, their parents, their kids. And if they believe that your book is worthy of four or five out of five stars, it becomes a certified great read. And with that status comes all sorts of wonderful promotional tools that will help your book stand out amongst the crowd of children's books that are published every week. Check it out today at our website, readingwithyourkids.com. Hey, want to thank our sponsors, Alice and Paul Clackworks. Make sure you check out her mommy's big red monster truck. And we also want to thank Dr. Don Mensch. She is the author of the Queen Vernita Visitor Series. Of course, we need to thank our guest, Dr. Connie Tate. She was a wonderful guest 
Check out her Roll-On Reads books. Also, I need to thank my amazing producer, Fatima Khan. She does so much to keep the podcast running. Thank you so much, Fatima. I also need to thank my beautiful wife for all of the support that she gives me. And, of course, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you so much for subscribing to the show wherever you find podcasts, whether it's uh, the iHeartRadio app, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Himalaya, Podbean, Podcast Addict, wherever you find your podcast, please be sure to subscribe to us. You can also subscribe to us on our podcast page. That's You can find that at readingwithyourkids.com. And also... Very, very sincerely, I want to thank you for for all that you do to make this world a better place. And and you are making this world a better place every time you read with your kids. I'll be looking for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. (laughs) 